I had this friend in high school. I'll call him Adam. Adam lived in one of those small Pennsylvania towns that are 20 to 30 minutes from even the nearest gas station or grocery store. His parents lived on a 200-acre lot of fields and forest. We saw elk come into the yard all the time when we would go to his parents' house. People would come from all over to go to Benazette, a area in the middle of nowhere maybe 45 minutes away from where he lived. This town was only popular because of the people coming to see the elk every year. For us, elk were more of a nuisance where we lived. They would rub their antlers against trees, taking off all the bark and killing the tree. They would itch themselves on the local cemetery gravestones and knock them over. Herds would cross the road, 30 or 40 at a time, and you would have to wait 15 minutes for every single one to cross. And then there were the people. People were always stopping on the dirt shoulder of the main road, just to look at the elk like it was the most magnificent thing imaginable. The people were almost as bad as the elk. So, what I'm trying to say is, Adam lived far out of the way of most civilization, and yeah, there were neighbors and houses along the road, but usually there was a good half mile or so between each place. Even today, there still isn't a completely reliable, high-speed internet provider out there. Adam has had satellite internet, as it's the fastest thing around. He and I used to hang out at his parents' house before he moved out to where he currently lives. They have a pretty big house, with a large garage and an old barn that was used primarily to store equipment like lawnmowers, dirt bikes, and farm equipment. We would explore the area around the buildings, venturing into the woods, and what we usually did the most was play video games. We were pretty limited to what we could play, though. On a good day, the internet was capable of some multiplayer games, but just barely. We always had the highest ping and usually did the worst on our team because of it. When we weren't exploring or gaming, we would throw on some music and play board games. Other times, we would sit and watch a movie. We would go high up into the cable channels for random movies that were on, and would always be surprised with our random choices. One day, we were scouring the highest channels of his cable when we flipped to a screen that was black and white. It looked like it was showing a hallway of some sort of industrial building. There were a few dollies, pallets, and small equipment dotting the edges of the hallway and a path big enough to walk through visible between it all. The walls were also made of brick on both sides, something that we don't really have a lot of around here. Some of the older buildings on main streets in larger towns might have brick buildings, but not this far out in the middle of nowhere. The cable didn't have a display telling us what movie this was, so we just sat and watched it. Dust speckled across the infrared light of the camera, making the area kind of look foggy. We sat watching this channel for a few minutes, having seen Paranormal Activity, Grave Encounters, and some other found footage movies. We thought this was just some sort of long scene where something might happen before moving on, but it didn't seem to change. After a few minutes of watching the grainy footage, Adam went to change the channel, and that's when I noticed the date and time that was ticking away in the corner of the screen. Checking our phones, it had today's date and an accurate time on it. It seemed like we were watching a black-and-white live feed of some sort of surveillance camera. The two of us decided to keep the TV on that channel and play some board games to pass the time, and check up on the channel every once in a while to see if anything changed on screen. After a game of Risk where I lost, the screen hadn't changed, we didn't notice anything had moved, just the time which was slowly ticking up. We sat and stared at the screen again, just focusing on the sight before us, it had become more clear as the dust settled over time. And then the screen went totally black for about two seconds before a new image appeared. The video that was now playing was a restaurant or a bar. I'm not sure if it was the same building or a different one. The view was from a corner, high up, maybe ten feet or so, unless the lens was distorting the perception. A bar with stools was lined, going left to right in the room and liquor bottles, various coolers, and machinery for getting drinks outlined the wall behind the bar. A small light was left on above the liquor display, but it wasn't enough to make the camera switch from the IR view to the regular view, so it left a large bright spot that washed out many of the sharp lines of the bottles. 
Wooden tables with seating for four were placed throughout the room. Some of these tables had a glow on their surface from the bar light that was enhanced by the IR picking it up. The chairs at the table seemed to be old, heavy wooden ones, and the floor was an older, dark wood compared to the chairs. You could tell just by the shades of the coloring. A hallway went down the right side of the screen, either to bathrooms, a cooler, a kitchen, or just maybe an entrance. The camera couldn't pick up more than a few feet down this hallway, though, due to the lack of light. It just looked like a dark void in the top right corner of the screen. There was no dust swirling about on this camera feed, either. It was like this room hadn't had anyone in it for a while. And we checked the time and date, still accurate to our phones. It had been roughly two hours since we first turned on this channel. Since it had been two hours, we decided to go outside and jump on the trampoline that Adam had in his barn. We positioned it so that we could jump onto it from the empty hayloft maybe 10 or 15 feet above it. At first it was a terrifying experience, but once you got the hang of it, it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had on a trampoline. After some time jumping and climbing through the old hay in the barn, we went back inside. And I'm glad we did, because it started to rain just as we walked onto the porch. We went back to the basement to check the camera feed and saw that some things had changed in the bar. Two glasses were now positioned on the bar, next to each other, their shapes accented by the lighted liquor display light on the cabinet behind them. On a table on the far left, middle of the room, was a plate. Silverware was set, and it kind of looked like the chair had been pulled out for someone to sit. We were outside almost an hour since the scene switched, and Adam and I figured we were going to have another switch either to the industrial hallway or something new sometime soon. He told me to keep an eye on the TV, and he ran up to the basement steps. After a few seconds, I heard him go up the other set of steps to the second floor. Then he came back down, a little slower as if he was carrying something. He emerged downstairs with an old VCR and some tapes. He said that his mom used to record soap operas when she was out, and she had a few blank tapes left over. If we weren't watching the camera feed, we could record it for roughly two hours at a time. Just as we were plugging in the VCR, the scene switched in a black flash, the image of the bar almost looking partially burned into the screen. The new scene was in a restaurant full of people. It looked similar in style to the bar we had just seen moments ago, but this scene was jarring and almost made us flinch because of all the sudden color that appeared on the screen. Once again we were in the corner of a room. The room had windows on the far side of the wall, extending across the entire room. The left side of the screen had more windows, with spaces in between them. People went about eating their meals, and the busboy cleared tables, and the service tended to their tables. The tabletops had a dark cherry border around the edge, with a lighter shade of wood in the middle. The chairs matched the dark cherry, and had a black leather seating pad permanently attached to their seat. The floor was an old wood that had darkened gray with age and had a flat, non-reflective sheen to it. There must have been 40 or 50 people sitting in this room, with a small weight forming towards the entrance. We both thought that the cameras were connected to a live restaurant feed, but it was no restaurant near us. We tried to look at the menus, the uniforms, the signs, the background outside of the windows for the name of the restaurant or anything that could help us figure out where this was at, but... The quality made the letters and details blend together when we tried to look. It was as we were staring that the scene switched again. In a flash, the color was gone, replaced by the grainy, greenish color that only certain IR cameras can give you with night vision. It had only been a few minutes, rather than an hour and a half or two hours this time. The TV showed us the inside of a home. The most prominent thing in the room was a couch, which was bright because of the light that was shining in the room. It wasn't a directional light from a ceiling or a lamp, but it seemed to be illuminating out from beneath us, like we were a camera setting on top of a TV. The light within the room kept changing in brightnesses, as if the TV was on and the scenes were switching on the screen. We could see a kitchen on the far wall, and got the impression that this was an apartment, possibly above the building that we had been watching previously. A clothes basket was sitting on the kitchen table, and some grainy pictures hung on the wall, none that we could make any specific detail out of. 
and a blinking light flashed every few seconds. We thought it was maybe a fire alarm. We set our tape to record, and we left to go grab dinner at what we called the motel. While we were sitting, getting our food, we talked about the things that we had been seeing. The last scene kind of unsettled us. The way the camera was placed, it wasn't in the corner of a room or stationary in an obvious spot, but it kind of seemed like it was on a shelf. Hidden. And we were wondering why we were seeing the inside of someone's home. It felt wrong. Almost illegal, whatever was going on. We finished our meals and went back to Adam's, and we walked to the basement, only to find the second scene of the darkened bar and dining area again. This time the scene had changed a bit more than before. The plate on the table was now dirty, and the glasses on the bar were gone. One of the glasses was on the table with the plate, and the other was nowhere to be seen. I told Adam I was going to watch the live feed, and he should go upstairs and grab an old TV that I knew he had. It had a VCR player built in under the screen, so we could continue recording the live feed while watching the stuff that we had already recorded. We would play the recorded footage and fast forward while keeping an eye on the darkened bar. As he was going upstairs to grab the small TV, I saw a flash that lit up the bar for a moment and after a few seconds, I heard thunder outside. I struggled to figure out what I had just seen when the screen flashed again, and soon I heard a rumble of thunder, far, far in the distance. This told me that the feed had to be somewhere sort of local. It was experiencing the same storm as us, at least. I pulled up the weather app on my phone and looked at a storm cell crossing the state. Unfortunately, it was a nasty storm that took more than a quarter of the state, with a few tornado warnings being issued as well as flood advisories. So maybe it was a coincidence if it were in Pennsylvania, but it could just be timed weird with a delay in the feed, but the timer in the corner seemed to be dead on, not a few minutes or seconds behind. Adam arrived at the basement, and we popped the first recorded cassette into the player and began watching it. While we were watching, I told him about the flashes and the thunder, and he said it was just a freak chance. It could even be the storm that was making us able to see this feed, what with the strange electrical charges and signal disruptions that storms can bring. We fast-forwarded through the footage. Our eyes glanced up when another flash happened on the big screen, and a few seconds later we heard thunder. Adam seemed a bit less skeptical this time after seeing it for himself. We looked back at the fast-forwarding recorded footage and saw that the laundry basket had moved a bit in the apartment. If we hadn't looked away and looked back, we may not have noticed the shift being so apparent. Rewinding and fast-forwarding again, you could see that the basket slowly moved over the course of the entire hour we recorded until the scene suddenly switched just as the recording came to the end. With maybe five minutes left, we saw the bar appear, and the light on the liquor cabinet flickered for a second before resuming its constant stream of light. As the fast-forward wound to its end, the first lightning flash in the bar appeared on screen, and I spotted something in the recording. I told Adam to rewind the tape and play it at regular speed. As the first flash of lightning bathed the room in light and exaggerated shadow, you could see this figure of a person standing in the dark hallway on the right side of the screen. As I pointed this out to him, another flash lit up the basement windows around us, and everything went dark as the power went out. The power was off for only a few seconds, and then you began to hear the whir of all the electronics in the house turn on at once. It was just enough to make everything need to reset their clock. As we turned on the television again, the default channel it was at was set to 3, our local PBS station. Flipping through the channels, we could not find that surveillance feed again. It just didn't exist now. We went through all the channels two or three times just to double and triple check. And still, nothing. We left the footage go in our heads for a bit. Adam lived at his parents' house for another few years, and often we'd talk about that strange day, even go through the channels looking for the feed. We didn't know what caused this channel to appear on the television. We had theories to what it could have been, but that was just it. 
theories. Was it phenomenon caused by the storm messing with the signals, or was it maybe some sort of prank? In any case, the things that we saw towards the end of the feed were unsettling at least, and frightening at best. 